uh, I think as you look at homework help videos, you see me using Sage Math, mostly to uh, skip tedious algebra, and um, and you know you you can try doing that algebra by hand by all means. Uh, nothing in this class should require Sage Math, but it's like a, a Sage Math is like a calculator, calculator for algebra, and it, it can reduce a lot of frustration. And I think. Uh, I should have a more proper tool for um, proper instruction for teaching you how to use that tool. So where I want you to start from is actually this lab that we will have in about a month and a half because uh, I rewrote this lab a year ago uh, specifically to kind of uh, have a portion of it that guides you through use of uh, SageMath. So, um, so so let me work through this part of the lab and uh, maybe explain some things as we go. And um, I hope that'll serve as a, a bit of an introduction to Sage Math and um, so that you can use it for yourself, either if you are following along in homework helper videos where I use it, or um, some have homework helper videos, I do do the algebra by hand, but um, maybe you know, you've know you done enough algebra by hand and you just want to use the calculator for symbolic algebra. So, um, so yeah, so let me do that. I think the way I'm going to do this uh, portion of the session is I'll have this uh, side by side. Um, so the lab manual on one side of the screen and uh, Sage Math cell on the other side of the screen. Um, I think I never really like the full screen mode here, so I won't do that. Let me make sure I'm sharing the right screen. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. I guess uh, I guess I can just read it out loud. It's not gonna take that long. I do know that you know how to read it, but uh, some people might be just mostly listening to the video. So let me uh, just read the lab manual out loud. And uh, before I start with that, so. In most of the homework help videos, uh, you won't be seeing me use this. You will be seeing me use a locally installed version of Sage Math. So if you do want to install it on your own computer, then uh, this should have links for doing that. There's a cloud version that you can use. And there's also, um, I guess if you go through this link, Sage Math then there's some instruction somewhere for downloading and installing. It depends on your operating system. And um, if you need help installing it on your own computer, um, talk to me and I can, I'm happy to uh, uh, help you walk you through. Um, just to, so you know, my setup, my setup um, that I thought worked really well in Windows 10 and Windows 11 is through what's called Windows subsystem for Linux. So within this Windows subsystem for Linux, I have uh, Sage Math installed. That's uh, how I run it, and the way I do it um, in most videos is I um, I have this running a, a a server, and I access the server through web browser. That, that's a complication that we don't need to deal with, which is why we are going to use this for the time being. This is good. Um, uh, and you know you can use this too, uh, as long as the amount of code you have isn't that long. This is perfectly fine. Okay, so with those preliminaries, uh, let me just uh, read through this lab manual. And even though this covers the topics uh, that we haven't covered in class yet, uh, for the purpose of covering use of Sage Math, it doesn't matter. And in fact, this is how I recommend that you approach any physics problem. Always think of separating into two parts. The first part contains all the physics. That's the part where you uh, use your physics knowledge to set up your system of equations. That's the physics part. And once you have that, then for the second part, it kind of doesn't matter whether you know the physics or not. Once you have the system of equations, then uh, you're just doing math to solve through that system of equations. So what we are doing here is going to be basically the second part. Somehow, somebody has set up that system of equations for us, and we are just going to use Sage Math to, um, to solve that system of equations that someone has set up for us. So let me start reading through the lab manual. In this class and elsewhere, you have seen me use computer algebra system, CAS, or CAS. 
either to demonstrate use of computer algebra system or to use it as a shortcut for complicated, tedious steps of algebra. For avoidance of that, you can get through this whole class, including this lab, without using a CAS. However, I strongly recommend that you go through below exercises now, learning a small amount of CAS usage so that when you see that you have a complicated system of equations, which will be the next part in this lab, you can either use the CAS to solve it or use the CAS to double check the answer you obtain by hand. The CAS I use for this class is SageMath. If you have it installed on your device, you can use it without access to the internet. If you have it, if you don't have it installed on your device, the quickest and easiest way to get access to Sage Math on the internet is through the Sage Cell website, which I have loaded on the right hand side here. The instructions here will assume that you are using Sage Cell website. Some steps uh, might need to be slightly modified if you are using interactive command line version of Sage Math. Sage Math has a built in documentation system that can be accessed through help command. We are going to be using a command called var for variables and a command called solve to solve a simple system of equations. Go to Sage Cell website and run below commands one at a time to take a brief look at the documentation first. So uh, we do the, you know, the help command. So with the Sage Math, if you know any Python, um, you can use your Python knowledge in Sage Math context because Sage Math, Math is built on Python. Uh, a lot of Python commands will just work in Sage Math. So uh, the documentation system that it has, it that is the um, Python documentation. So like a help function that, uh, oh, I don't know what it'll do if I do this. Oh yeah, <laughs> if I just run it like this, then uh, it does the things that um, the yeah, yeah, Python's um, the documentation system will do. Um, and you can do this, type Python help, you know, you can do that, um, evaluate and yeah. Now um, you can't do interactive stuff. That's where this error is popping up. This is one limitation of the Sage Math cell that it, uh, you give up the interactivity of the uh, normal Python, um, 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 scripting interface. So, um, uh, but if you have a Sage Math installed on your computer, you can use it interactively as well. So there's the var command that let's say you don't know how to use it and you get these errors and whatnot. <laughs> then um, if you do help var as it is in this uh, help line here or the command uh, example there, if you run that, click evaluate, then you will get the built-in documentation for the var function. Uh, the documentation has two parts. The first part describes the function. It describes what kind of inputs it takes, uh, any notes, uh, what output you get. And this part can be fairly um, 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 dense to get through, especially for people who might not have that much experience in programming. Uh, you're not used to reading programming documentation. So oftentimes the more useful part of the built-in documentation is examples. Because with the examples, you can just kind of see how is it being used. You know, Sage command, ah, that's how they are um, entering the vars. So somehow they are trying to define three variables and you can separate them either with the spaces or with the commas, or you can define them. They are showing all the different ways you can do. You know, find the one you like, and do that. Uh, I think I like this syntax the best. So, uh, so yeah, that's how. Um, um, the, the, so I, when you look at this built-in documentation, I recommend that you look through the examples because those are going to be a quick way of saying how do you use this. So, um, so that's what the lab manual instructed us to do. Type above line. Okay, so type in above line in the input below. Input box below the text, type some Sage code below, and press evaluate, I've done that, and click on evaluate. For the rest of this lab manual, whenever you see a block of indented monospaced text as above, it is intended as a block of code that can be entered into Sage Cell website. Read through the output, uh, which is the built-in Sage Math this output um, for the var command, pay particular attention to example section, 
That's what I'm saying. Other parts of documentation can sometimes be too dense to understand at the first reading. When you feel you are, when you feel comfortable with the var command, run below line to look at the documentation for the solve command. That's what we will be using to um, solve through a system of equations. So help solve. And again, this is the built-in documentation. And um, again, there's this example. And I will follow uh, through this example, uh, even though I do it slightly differently. But hey, um, let's just uh, use this as a starting place. And if you want to change anything, we can change your stuff. Uh, they also have documentation for the help command itself. If you feel like it, try running help help. Oh, I think I kind of did it, so I won't do it again. So let's consider working out the problem done in below video for OpenStax University Physics Volume 1, Chapter 12, Problem 35. So for our purposes, whatever the physics context is, doesn't matter. That's a part one of working through a physics problem. We are just skipping to part two, where we have the system of equations, and we are just uh, solving for it. We have a system of three equations, and um, and now we'll solve for it. Um, so at the nine minute mark in the video, we have a system of three equations, which I'm not gonna say out loud because that'll take long. <laughs> um, and although in the video, we work through the algebra by hand for some additional time, it's at this step, we can work out the remainder of the problem with the Sage Math instead. We have three equations and three unknowns, uh, left tension, right tension, and mass of B, um, and subscript B. We can define a system of equations in Sage Math and use solve function to solve for these three unknowns. I'll explain part by part the next set of Sage Math code I want you to type into Sage Style website. If you want, you can type in or copy and paste the whole block at the end, but so that you understand what the code does, I'll explain it after each part below. So, and by the way, you can um, gain some level of interactivity by just clicking evaluate after each line. So there's this first line where we are defining all the variables. So TL, TR, M1, G, M2, MB, L. And because I have a couple different things named L, uh, so I, for the next two things, I'm just going to spell out L2, L3. And um, so if you just run this one line, what SageMath will do is it'll declare these variable names as symbols that might potentially get used in a uh, equation context. And uh, for the example of the, um, the solve command you saw before, you see it do something like this, um, like assign all these um, into the, like a, it's a Python or Sage method variables. Um, okay, you can do that. I'm not quite sure what the function of that is because um, uh, I, I guess in the Sage math cell, you know, that hides the output. Okay, um, but uh, so I, I like to keep my codes simple. So that's why you will see me not really do that assignment thing because with this variable command, you've declared the symbols you need. So um, I'm going to keep it simple. Just do it this way. You have to declare all the symbols you are going to use in your expressions. Sage math has X symbol built in. That's the one symbol you don't have to actually declare. But all other letters or symbols need to be declared. I usually use my variable names with the subscripts ignored. That is, I define M1, not M underscore 1. Although both are valid Sage math variable names. Note that your symbol cannot start with a number. M1 is a valid symbol name, 1M is not. And there are a few special keywords that you should be aware of and avoid using as names. Lambda, or lowercase, uh, it's a special Python keyword that you can't overwrite at all. If you try, you'll get an error. And uh, the function n is used to get decimal approximation of an exact expression. I recommend not overwriting it so that you have access to it. And the usual suspects of numerical constants, such as e for Euler's number and pi for pi. If you accidentally overwrite useful function or numerical constant, you can undeclare symbols by using the reset function. 
So here, for example, with the variables declared, if I type in TL, um, it'll show, you know, TL, it recognizes it as um, a declared symbol. But if I reset it before I, I do that, then it'll error out. Because I reset it here, so it doesn't know what TL is. Uh, okay, so now in the next three lines, I'm going to be defining e the three equations. So, uh, uh, well, I'll stay here. The equations are up above in the lab manual, in the you know human readable format, but this is fairly readable, so I'll just uh, type it in. So, um, so I like to put each equation into its own uh, sage math variable so that I can refer to them succinctly later. So that's what I'm doing here. Um, so equation one is uh, um, that sage math variable is being assigned this uh, expression, which is going to be an equation. Uh, TL plus TR minus M1 times asterisk um, G. Now, in sage math, you have to be careful to always indicate multiplication because it, the way it was written above in a human readable format, we had implied multiplication, and sage math doesn't understand that. So you have to make sure you always put in multiplication symbols. Uh, minus m2 times g minus mb times g is equal to the two equal signs. It has a different meaning from a single equal sign. This in a uh, programming uh, language, what's called, it's an assignment symbol. It assigns what's on the right-hand side as a value for what's on the left-hand side. Uh, what I have here is a logical operator. It's an equality. It, it tests if uh, what's on the left-hand side is equal to the what's on the right-hand side. Now, in this symbolic expression, it's just a part of the equation. So that left-hand side is equal to zero. That's equation one. Let me type in equations two and three. Equation 2 is 0 plus L times TR minus L divided by 2 times M1 times G minus L spelled out 2, that's part of the variable name, times M2 times G minus L minus L spelled out, or 3, part of the variable name, times MB times G is equal to 0. Again, for the time being, I'm not really thinking about if these equations are right, and just typing in a system of equations that someone has developed for me. Equation three is going to be assigned TL equal to two times TR. Now, if I click evaluate here, it won't actually print anything because with this being assigned to these variables, the sage math cells default behaviors not to put any output. If you wanna check what equations one, two, and three look like, um, I can uh, print it like uh, this. Um, so what what is here? So, so Python has, a, uh, hence the SageMath, has two different kinds of lists. Um, this is what's called a, a tuple. Um, and if I do this, it'll just uh, print that tuple like uh, this. And if I do this with the square brackets, what this is, is it's something called a list. And for our purposes, I guess I'll say there's no big difference between tuple and a list. I like uh, using tuples for a simpler uh, list of things because it is a simpler object. A list is actually a more involved object, but for the way we are gonna use it, doesn't really matter. Uh, so don't let either the difference between parentheses and square brackets confuse you. Um, so, so now here I can uh, see from uh, printing this out that uh, equation one is correctly defined as I typed in there. You might see some things reordered. That's totally fine. Py uh, Sage method does its own bit of a simplification. Uh, but what I'm seeing is that what I see printed here is uh, equivalent to the equations I've typed in. Okay, uh, moving on. Above commands define variables equation one, equation two, and equation three in terms of symbols we declared. Not all multiplication has to be shown explicitly. Yeah, that's what I was describing earlier. And two, equal sign is an assignment operation. It assigns what is on the right hand side of that into the sage math variable that is on the left. And the two equal signs is an equality symbol. This distinction especially matters when you're assigning an equation into a variable. If you want to check that the variables are correctly defined, you can check it using print command. 
Yeah, so one other way to do that is I can do print, just explicitly tell SageMath to print these expressions. Then it'll print these equations one at a time. Um, that's another way to display these equations for double checking. Okay, with the equations now defined, we are ready to use the solve function. Below is the command that will solve for TL, TR, and B, treating all other symbols as known. So solve, um, and I guess there I use the list version of it. Let's just use that. List of equation one, equation two, equation three. That's my system of equations. And I tell it to solve for following uh, variables um, in, in order. So TL first, and then TR, and then MB. And um, uh, let me read the rest. The first argument to solve function is the system of equations. The square brackets enclose the element of a list, um, list the Python object. <laughs> Again, if you use parentheses, it'll be a tuple. And for our purposes here, they are functionally equivalent. The next set of arguments are the unknowns to solve for number of unknowns have to exactly match the number of equations, TL, TR, and MB. The output of above command should look like a list of lists. And I'll explain that. Oh, uh, yeah. And so uh, specifying uh, these to be solved for also kind of tells the SageMath that all the other symbols that might be in the equations, that they are known. They are something that you can plug in numbers of. So when I click evaluate here, what it's going to do is it does this solve thing. And what it has solved there, it's a list of lists. Um, wonder if I do print, if uh, it'll print a little bit more prettily. Uh, it might, might not. Okay, it didn't. Um, yeah, I mean a little bit, but it didn't really help. So, okay. Um, the output of above command should look like a list of lists. So this is what it means. Um, so you can see the list here. That's a list, okay, outside the list. And it contains as its element another list. <laughs> so that's what it means. It's a list of lists. Uh, so I will explain the meaning of the output below the block of command you can now run to obtain. Run the below block of commands. Everything after uh, hashtag or pound sign is a comment, comment, which means it is added on as an explanation for humans. Looking at the code, sagemath slash Python will ignore it as it runs the code. So, um, so that's uh, the comments that I was going above here. And the difference between um, doing Sage, using sagemath cell and the interactive version is in the in interactive version, if you typed in one line at a time, you can then run this final run line and it'll work. In SageMath cell, basically everything that this will depend on have to be all here. So if you are doing one line at a time, you have to do it by just adding on the lines. You can get rid of previous lines. So let me go back to not printing this. Then the output looks um, like this. Um, if you do the word lap, wrap here, I have to kind of scroll to the right. Um, so the output should look like a Below, it's a little long. It's a list of lists, meaning the outermost is the first list. It contains as its element, other list. Uh, that is the next inner list. Um, because we had a linear system of equations, that is first order, no squares, no uh, cubes, no you know fourth power. The system of equations had only one solution. There are times when there will be more than one set of solutions, like if you are using sage math to solve through a quadratic equation. Um, um, so the outermost uh, list contains only one element. The next inner contains three elements for solutions to TL, TR, and MB. Our three unknowns. It's a little more manageable working with these returns if we put the result into a variable and look at one element at a time. Replace the last line of the block of code with an assignment into a variable, solution, sol equal to that. So that, and, uh, and you see that uh, this bit has been added. Do I ever explain it? Uh, let's see. So that sol is our variable containing our system of solutions. We can add the lines print sol zero, uh, print sol one, and print sol two, so that we can look at one solution per line. 
with these changes, the block of code looks like. And yes, you have to run the. Oh, I guess I never explained this. So this is the Sage method, or again, Python syntax for referring to each element of a list. So solve had a list of lists. So I want to get the, uh, the first list in that outer list or the, uh, the, the zeroth element. That's the first. So I want to get this out of solve. That's why I added this little bit addressing that index, index zero. That's going to just get that first element out of the outer list. So I have a soul there. And if I evaluate here, it'll be just a blank. Uh, that's why the instructions have you to print this. Uh, so if I do print a soul, what you will see is the um, just that list. That is the your s actual system of solutions. It's a little hard to look at. So now what I'm going to do is get it one element at a time. First element, the second element, and so on. So I'll print the first element of the sol variable, and then the second element of sol variable, and the third element of sol variable by doing print, parenthesis, sol, square bracket, two. And here the square bracket actually matters. You can't do it as parenthesis, it'll give you an error. Okay, I evaluate, and now you see the uh, three solutions are put this way. So now the final step in this, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I think we can add a line so that we can put on. With these changes, the block of code looks like, and yes, you have to run the whole block all over again. This is one of the limitations of the Sage Cell website. Now the final step of this brief introduction to CAS with the example of Sage Math. Uh, suppose you want to find the numerical value of MB. Uh, as in the, 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 the homework question that we are working through. You don't really want to do this by hand. One, it's tedious. Two, you might make a calculator mistakes. I make a calculator mistakes <laughs> as the expressions are complicated. A CAS like a Sage Math can also automate the step of plugging in numerical values for symbols in a syntax called a substitution. In Sage Math expressions, this is implemented with a bound method by which we mean a function um, that is bound to an object. Python is an object-oriented programming language. So bound method, subs for substitution. Bound method in Python is used by appending a period, subs, to the expression that the function is bound to. For example, to plug in values, these um, uh, parameters, the values in the video so that you can compare it with a manually obtained value. Into the solution for MB, you call the bound method with the following command. So you have a reference to the object, sol2, uh, that's going to basically refer to this expression uh, that we are printing just before. And that expression will have a bound method, subs. Now, you can actually bring up, uh, so, you know, if you are if you don't know the syntax already, then uh, what you can do is you can bring up the built-in documentation uh, for that bound method. So when I do that, this is what you see. So it'll first print these three lines as before, and then it shows help on built-in function substitute, substitute method, which is bound to that. Um, it shows all these examples. What the examples are showing in this uh, um, verse expression, yeah, substitute with, the, and it shows a few different ways you can specify the um, specify the uh, values. I like the keyword arguments because those look natural, um, but there might be um, contexts where a dictionary argument might work better or um, relational expressions might work better. This actually allows you to use an, a, one of the solutions as, as an input to substitute. Um, or you might want to um, do um, other stuff. Um, you can do a list of lists. Um, so anyways, uh, so this is something you can read on your own later. I'm going to use the substitute function to uh, plug in numbers. So let me plug in, uh, I'll just, Follow this uh, command. You call the bound method with the following command. I already typed this in, and I'm saying m1 is uh, equal to m. So it, I guess it's, uh, I'll say equal to, um, but it's a, it's the keyword argument. Um, so it, the keyword m1 has the value on the right-hand side. 
So that's what that keyword argument in Python context is. Um, that n2 is equal to 58, l is equal to 7.0, l spelled out 2 is equal to 1.0, l spelled out um, 3, part of the variable name, <laughs> is equal to 1.5. So uh, keep all your numbers in basic SI unit, and the meaning of the numerical app will be clear. It will be in basic SI unit. Updating our previous block of code with this new line and print it for display, we should have... By the way, I don't think we need that print thing. As long as I'm just looking at this, I can just evaluate, and it will still print the last line. Yeah, it still prints the last line. Um, you know, different ways to do it. Um, then uh, with that, it says MB is equal to 6, I assume kilograms. <laughs> and to check if it's correct, you can go back up in the video and check. And um, these are the two main ways that I use Sage Math in this class. I use it to solve a system of equations, that's the solve function. And I use it to help um, specify values that I use for calculating numerical value in a kind of logical fashion. That's the substitute function. And those to automate some of the tedious tasks and kind of makes it um, clearer that whether I made the mistake or not. You know, if I plug it in M1 equals 40 by instead of 50 by mistake, if you uh, see me plug it in into this expression, it might be hard to notice it after, you know, L times M1 was 40 instead of 50. But in this syntax, you can clearly see, oh yeah, that was supposed to be 50, not 40. So... So yeah, that's the brief introduction to CAS to the point where you can use it for some of the analysis in this lab. Again, it's not required you, that you use CAS, but as a calculator for symbolic expressions, a CAS like a Sage Math can reduce points of frustration in dealing with complicated algebra, which is really unproductive given that this is a physics class, not an algebra class. Uh, you already took cal college algebra to get here. <laughs> So, so yeah, and the rest of the lab, we, we don't need it. Now, uh, later on in the semester, you will also use, uh, see me use uh, Sage Math to solve some differential equations and other things. Um, um, so there are other videos for that. <laughs> um, and uh, again, because the Sage Math is built on Python, it has a full, um, like a Python syntax available. You can do things like, uh, something like uh, this, I squared, uh, for i in range uh, 0 to 10. Uh, so this is a Python syntax for building a list of things where um, it'll basically print squares uh, from 0 squared all the way to 9 squared. Um, so if you happen to know Python, you can totally just use it um, because Sage Math will accept Python syntax. Um, on the other hand, you know, if you're uh, are not familiar with the programming, then you don't have to worry about any of that. Um, so this is basically instruction step by step. Um, we are not using any conditionals or loops. <laughs> Those are more programming uh, struct programming kind of um, uh, syntax stuff. Um, all of that you don't really need to use it. You can use Sage Math cell basically like a calculator. Calculator for sometimes just numbers. You know, one point five times three point four. You can do that. You can use it as a really overqualified calculator. <laughs> or you can use it as a calculator for symbolic algebra, which is what these lines, which is what these are. Uh, these are. So, wow, that uh, mini tutorial took kind of long. <laughs> but um, I hope this is uh, useful for those of you both following through homework helper videos and maybe, you know, in your own solution steps, came up with a system of equations and now you need to do it, um, do the algebra. And now one last word of caution or note. So Sage Math is really good at doing calculations like this calculations involving linear system of equations. It's really good. It's also good at doing like algebraic system of equations. Like if we had squares, cubes, fourth power, it's really good at doing that. What it is not good at dealing with is dealing with the transcendental functions or special functions like trig functions. Uh, 
if you have any system of equations where it has to solve for some variable that's wrapped inside a trig function, there's a chance that it can do that correctly. Um, those you might still need to do by hand. But fortunately, those uh, kind of calculations are kind of few, few and far between. So for vast majority of algebra you need to do in this class, SageMath wor will work really well because it's where it excels. So... So with that, I, uh, oh, I wanted to point out to one thing, which is that um, somehow if you are interested in learning more about SageMath, there's a whole tutorial that you can follow through. Uh, it claims that you can complete this tutorial in three hours or so. I'm not sure if I believe that, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, uh, this tutorial will cover more of the detailed uh, things in SageMath, possibly even some of the programming, yeah, programming aspects of SageMath. Um, so uh, if you want to spend more time, I encourage you to do that. Um, if for the purpose of what we use, what I use it for in this class, this little block of text, uh, not that block, the, um, well, the one block that I erased. Let me just go back to that. Um, this little block of text exemplifies basically everything I use the Sage Math for in this class, basically as a uh, as a calculator that does both algebraic calculation and uh, numerical calculation.